Hello everyone, I'm Nini FC and this is Blue Lines TV and today I'm bringing a transfer daily video. Now, there's a ton of things to talk about in today's episode. It is literally a transfer merry-go-round, but to kick things off, I'm going to be talking about Jamie Vardy. Now, earlier on today, Louis from 100% Chelsea stated from his source, not Louis, Louis' source, that yes, Vardy will be becoming a Chelsea player by next week. He's going to be playing his last game for Leicester City this weekend and that a move is trying to be finalised. Now, what he is stating as well is that, yes, we do want to loan Mitri Batshuayi to Leicester City for the season, and that's going to possibly allow us to then bring Vardy to the club. Now, before I get into the tactical reasons for why, I don't really think Vardy would make sense at Chelsea. I was given some piece of information earlier today in regards to another possible transfer target for up front, and that is Christian Benteke. Now, we know that Conte has been looking at Lorente earlier. It's been a for like the past year, it seems. Conte is looking for a physical target man, someone where he can lump the ball up to them. You know, especially with how we play, we like to play the quick balls on the transition to our strikers. You know, we like to bypass midfield. Once the strikers hold the ball, the rest of the team can come and support them. And that's how Conte likes to play. That's why he's always favoured a striker like that. He's realised with Mitchy, he actually can't get performances like that at a high enough standard to really suit the system. Murata would be wasted, I felt, if he was just to become a Saga Man striker like that. And Christian Benteke is an option being looked at as well as Jamie Vardy. Now, Benteke, to me, this guy is the best Saga Man in the league. I feel sorry for him. He gets lumped every type of ball at Crystal Palace. But end of the day, he is a good striker. He's not awful. He's not useless. He could potentially do something like Chelsea with better players around him, especially when he is the best striker airily in the league. And he's got decent technique. I think he'd make more sense than a Jamie Vardy because in regards to Jamie Vardy, this is a guy I really like. His tenacity, his passion, and it's his mentality too. He's always on the move. He's always looking for space. He never stops. He never hides. He's always He always wants to be an outlet but in regards to him making sense at Chelsea now I'm thinking like this if we use a 3-4-3 we know that the central striker has to be comfortable and adept at dropping deeper so he can link up with the other front too I'm not sure that's the best use of Jamie Vardy because again Vardy does all this stuff without the ball his runs and behind his movement is harrying he's a guy that doesn't get involved in the build-up play at all and I feel that if you were to bring in someone like that you would have to adapt your style. Potentially, like this could bring reason to a 3-5-2. Um, of course, Morata being the guy that plays off Vardy. And in a way, we would be using a target man. But instead of Vardy having to use his, uh, his strength to hold off defenders, he'd be running onto balls. That could potentially work on the counter-attack, especially if Conte's looking to become more of a counter-attacking team. But at the same time, is that the most effective way for us to really break some of these teams down I'm not quite too sure to be honest um even then in regards to this whole chance of merry go around Leicester City are only going to sell one big player this season now there are there is truth behind Mares, Vardy and Drinkwater but Leicester aren't going to sell all three that's not going to happen now in regards to this chance of merry go around if we were to bring in Drinkwater that would mean that our move for Oxlade Chamberlain isn't going to happen. Now, Conte and Marina are making Oxlade Chamberlain the number one target so far. She's been having a lot of meetings with him and everything's falling in regards to, uh, you know, uh, Arsenal accepting a fee. Now, Oxlade Chamberlain is willing to go if he has to. He has no real affinity in terms of making sure that he, he definitely wants to end his career at Arsenal or anything like that. He's, he's also looking for a nice pay rise as well, which he'd get if he came to Chelsea and also for tactical reasons as well Conte really wants Oxlade Chamberlain because Conte knows this guy can be the guy who can play left wing back or right wing back and also I've got this guy in midfield as well so he's actually a jack of all trades players I'm getting three players for the price of one and Marina's saying all she can to really finalise this deal so if we did bring in Oxlade Chamberlain then Danny Drinkwater isn't going to come but at the same time with how football clubs are run you can't just rely and put all your eggs in one basket. Now, let's say Arsenal don't want to play ball and they don't want to sell Oxlade Chamberlain. They make it even more difficult for him to leave. Then, of course, you're going to look at your backup option, and that is Danny Drinkwater. Now, like I said, 
if we sign anyone from Leicester, we can possibly only sign one player. Of course, the information from Louis Source regarding Mitchley going on loan to Leicester City to bring in Vardy, that could be a potential placeholder to be to be able to bring in two players from Leicester. Because of course Leicester would have a quality option ready for them. And um maybe they'd be more willing to negotiate with a potential move like that. But um in regards to drink water, that all stems down to the facts of, you know, whether we get Oxo Chamberlain or not. So it's all gonna fall down to that. But it is fairly interesting and you know there could be a criticism in regards to leaving transfers too late, but at the same time, that is pretty rich coming from me as well because there's been tons of fantastic deals pulled off at the last minute all the time. And sometimes in football, most times clubs, they're just not going to sell someone unless they've got their insurance back up in or unless they've replaced a the player that you want to buy from them. It's just the reality and nature of how football works. And let's be serious. What club has had a successful 100% transfer record every single window? It just doesn't happen. Football doesn't work like that. You're going to have particular years where you do get lucky, get most of the players you want. Other years, it's not going to be the same. So it's just part and parcel of what we have to expect and realise as fans. But anyway, moving on to some other stories now. It looks like Barcelona are turning their attention to Willian. Now, Willian is a transfer target, meaning that, of course, Barca are looking at a variety of players to fill that left-hand side. Of course, they looked at Dembele, Coutinho. Williams, another player they're looking at as well. He'd be a cheaper option than those guys. And they feel they could potentially be able to bring him in and get him. Honestly, this is just me hyp hypothesizing. I'll just butcher that words. But um, <laughs> in a perfect world, let's say we did sell William to Barcelona. Now... Instead of us turning our attention to Jamie Vardy, I'd love if we turned our attention to Riyad Mahrez. Drop in the Mitchley deal if they want to bring him on loan or whatever. That would be the most sensible thing. That would make the most sense because, of course, Mahrez being able to cut inside from the right on his left foot is something that would really transform our attacks. Now, a lot of you guys know on Twitter, Mahrez is a player I really love. I constantly talk about him all the time. Before we were even linked with him, I was stating my opinion that we really need to bring in Riyad Mahrez. And I think that with his skill, his dribbling ability, his vision, uh, being able to take on a man, plus his shooting ability, that would make a lot of sense. And that would upgrade our attacking fluency because Mahrez is adaptable at linking up the play and dropping deeper. And also he's good at playing further up. Now, in a way with Pedro and William, Pedro is much better without the ball in terms of his runs and behind and his movement. When Pedro plays a bit deeper, has to link up, he's not as good, he's not as effective because he's more susceptible to losing the ball and giving it away or sloppy build-up play. William as well, William is good at the build-up play, but of course he's been sacrificed on the right-hand side where he's not really able to really affect the goal as much. And then it all boils down to off-the-ball movement, which William just doesn't have. Um, I think with Morris, he... He, he kind of has both of their best qualities in William and Pedro. And I think he would actually complement that front three. And you know what? The beautiful thing is, he's going to free up more space for Eden Hazard. Because now Eden Hazard isn't necessarily going to be the guy getting marked out, out, out of games. Or having opposition teams really focusing their attention on him. And I think Amar is coming in would really complement the team more. And of course, you know, in my head, it would make sense to run the transfer like that. But then it all falls down to who's going to buy who, who's going to sell who. And uh, this links on to my, to end this, uh, the Transfer Daily video, two more players to talk about now, Cedric Suarez. Now, like I did say, he has been in London. The only thing I can confirm regarding Cedric Suarez is that Emanalo really likes him and wants to bring him in. Of course, he'd be cheaper as well. And also, uh, you, know, he's a, you know, he's a decent player as well. But here's the thing, Southampton won't sell Suarez if... Van Dyke goes and leaves Liverpool. Now, in regards to Van Dyke, yes, Chelsea do want to sign him, but they're ready to play the long game for him. Now, of course, you're thinking we do have defenders, but maybe potentially if we brought in Van Dyke, maybe Conte might even think yeah, maybe Luis as a midfield option. I'm not too sure. I don't necessarily think so. Um, but sometimes when you do have exceptional quality on the market, clubs do have a tendency 
So just go for them. I mean, we saw that last time at United when Van Persie was available. And so Alex Ferguson changed the whole way the team played just to be able to fit Van Persie in with Rooney. Because originally Kagawa was a guy who was going to play behind Rooney so Rooney could play further up. But um, of course, it didn't work like that. And with anyway, Chelsea want to pay 50 million plus 10 million in add ons for Van Dyke. Southampton wants 70 million. Now, I've always felt it's funny when clubs are willing to spend so much money. Why? Why do they always get reluctant when it's an extra 5 or 10 million? Because if you think about it like this, let's say you sign a player, he doesn't do that well. You're looking for a new guy in the market. You, you end up paying another 30, 40 million. That ends up being, what, 70 million, 80 million over two years. You could have bought one guaranteed quality player for near that same amount of money and not had to worry or waste time paying scouts and sending them on, on missions to look for defenders here and there. That could have all been avoided. But, of course, it doesn't work like that. Liverpool still want to try and sign the guy. But, you know, Chelsea are playing the hardball game and waiting because, again, Van Dijk isn't training. He does want to leave. They feel confident that, um, you know, because Van Dijk spent it so adamant he definitely wants to go, that Southampton will probably drop the asking price nearer to the end of the transfer window. So that's definitely something to stay tuned in for. But anyway, you guys, thank you for watching my transfer daily video today. Please like, comment and subscribe, of course. Definitely subscribe. And also, if you like the video and content, share it with your friends, let your friends know about it. It really helps the channel grow. It would really mean a lot. Of course, follow me on Snapchat. Follow the Twitter page. That's at NiniFC. You guys, this brings an end to the Transfer Daily video. I want to see all your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. It could be very interesting to read. Anyway, you guys, I'm going to go now. And thanks for watching today's video.